In this video, we'll be taking apart the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the glass backplate. There's a secondary microphone located over here. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 14 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this top plastic cover which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located here. And here's the wireless charging coil. On the other side we can see graphite film top transfer heat. Now that we have access to the battery cable we'll disconnect that first. At this point we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. Here's the 12 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. The main board is a dual layer design board. There's an additional microphone on the top corner. On the other side, we can see the headphone jack connected over here, the proximity sensor on the top, and some thermal pads on the shield top transfer heat. The headphone jack can be disconnected by just popping it off. Here's a better look. Now that the shield cover has been removed, we can see additional thermal paste or thermal compound on the RAM or processor, as well as the ROM or storage. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed. We can see additional antenna lines drawn on the speaker assembly, 
as well as more graphite film to help transfer heat. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard, and this cable is for the screen, which is connected to an extension cable that connects to the main board. If you needed to replace the screen, you would disconnect the screen cable from the extension cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. This is the 12 megapixel telephoto lens. And this has OIS or optical image stabilization. To remove the battery, there are two pull tabs provided to help you pry the battery off. One is located here, and there's another one over here underneath this flex cable. However, I personally don't like these type of pull tabs since they almost always tend to tear or rip. So I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. There's also some adhesive underneath the subboard which is holding it down. There's a small pull tab provided over here in the corner to help you pry the adhesive off. However, I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol and pry it off. The primary microphone is located over here. And the SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. Here's a look at the charger port flex as well as the extension flex cable for the screen. Looking at the charger port, we can see a red rubber gasket around it. This is the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens and the 48 megapixel primary camera. The main camera has OIS or optical image stabilization. There's more graphite film on the back of the camera to help transfer heat. To remove the flex cable for the fingerprint reader and buttons on the side, there are two Phillips screws which need to be removed that are holding down the bracket on the side of the frame. Here's a look at the flex cable assembly. Now the physical buttons can be removed by pushing them in. Taking a look at the mid frame, we can see a cutout over here which looks like they possibly plan to use a vapor chamber, but later on just ended up using a 3D layer of graphite to help transfer heat. I'm pretty sure if they used a copper vapor chamber, it would have helped with the performance of the device. Moving on, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held on with some adhesive. 
and the same goes for the vibrator motor which is located next to that. Both of those can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.